Give thanks to the Lord. Say, God, thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. Born and unborn children, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, Lord of glory. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. I want us to thank God for three things. I told the pastors that the greatest prayer of faith is the prayer of thanksgiving. Hebrews 11 verse 6 said, He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And I say, the word of them that they just listen to him. So the other verse will say, must believe that he exists. And if he exists, meaning that he's the God of miracle. He's involved in doing miracle. I want us to thank God that before the end of the year, some of our daughters will be wedded here. Nobody had told me I'm engaged. Okay, one person. Yes. But I want us to thank God that even those who are not engaged now, I'll be doing at the end of the year that their wedding will take place. If you believe with me, say, God, I thank you. Go ahead and thank the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Sometimes I get worried that people come from outside here, receive their miracle, why people inside? I don't know, it's still familiarity, uh, familiarization visits, or whatever that make that they don't believe in the word of God. Somebody came, they're going to do IVF. The doctor said, the husband doesn't have any seed at all, no sperm. Uh -uh, what happened? So by the time I came, I did deliverance on the woman. And I said, go and call your husband. We prayed. The husband returned. They said, ah, how come that you have plenty of spend more than even required? Now, the wife, they told her, we can't find any ovaries in you. Another time, they said, the womb is not conducive. We did deliverance on her. Everybody saw it. And um, the other day, she sent me a text. She said, Daddy, your daughter is pregnant. So I want us to thank the Lord that women that are trusting God from the fruit of the womb in this church, who are members of this church, that between now and end of the year, they will carry children in their womb. Go ahead and thank him. Remember, I didn't say ask. They just thank him. Thank him. And if you're one of them, really thank God, she said. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. And finally, those who are trusting God for a job. You know, I told us the other day that when I went for this break, five days break, I went for sport and returning back on sport. And I had a voice that he said, Ne worry, Jay Chor, that you have work that you have. You are using to wait for a better work. You know, when you graduate from university and you have a job to teach in a primary school, in a private school, and they're paying you 40,000, 50,000. You know, that is not your real salary. Are you following? You are using it to wait for a better job where you can be paid 150, 200, 300. So we're going to pray that all our children here, that God will settle them. I didn't hear you, amen. Say, so God, settle our people between now and the end of the year. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray that God will settle you. That God will settle our people. We'll come back with testimonies. Remember today, we are thanking God 
Lord, we thank you for the doing now. And the end of the year, he would have settled our people with very good job. Very good, very interesting job. Lord, settle them. Settle them. They are here. Iroma Shuku is here. Amara is here. Um, Favor is here. Oibo is here. Stephen is here. Stephanie is here. When God is married here, all of you need to be settled. God will settle you. Malian Gladabo Shanil Ibekedia. Iragalabuka Tozori Bakatazalia. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. And finally, at the end of the year, by 31st, none of us shall be missing. We shall be complete and even increase. Thank you for God shall keep you alive and keep me alive. Take these four prayers, very important. Linga bragala do zobro koshkanda la makuria. Iraka papaka lo doria liba kulia. Thank you for we shall be alive. We shall be complete to God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Sit down very well on the head of your enemy. Now, I want to find out if you really remember what we thank God for. This is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four. How many prayers did we pray? Okay, we prayed for. Here, which is number one that we thank God for? Wait, don't talk about it. So much. Number one, which one is number one? Yes? Eh? I didn't hear you. Okay, number two. This is number two. Hello, this is number two. What is number two prayer point? Eh? Talk loud. Media people, cooperate now. When people are talking, give them a microphone. Number three. Number three, what is the top prayer? Eh? The God. Is that number three? Eh? That's number three. Eh? Eh? Okay. Say we should thank God for those who are anticipating jobs. That God should settle them and give them very. Okay, much. I think that is it. Eh? Is that the last one? Eh? How many prayers did we pray? Four. Four. Okay. All right. Number four. Praise the Lord. We pray that, that by the end of the year, none of us will be found wanting. I think that's number four, Abby. Yeah. Then number three is what? Eh? Eh? Job. Number two is what? Eh? Number one is what? Marriage. Do you know why I'm doing this most? Eh? Eh? Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Wait. It's four. That one. You see, eh? That one, thank God, we are alive. I just studied it, but I told you that we, after the day Hebrew 11, 6, I studied the Thanksgiving prayer. So if you don't thank God that you are alive, how will you do the prayer? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So number one is what? Eh? What? Marriage. Eh? Uh -uh. Live the thanking of a life. Okay, the last prayer is what? Eh? Did I pray for long life or I pray to the end of the year? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, the last prayer is what? That no one shall be missing, which is equals long life too. But you need to get it correct. The second or the last one? Job. Second to the second last. The other
Huh? Fruit of the womb. Those of you who are expecting God to put children in your womb, agree to sleep with your husband, allow God to put children in your womb. Yeah? Number three. Those of you who are teaching in private schools, those of you who are working in one small company where they're paying you 60, 70,000, that's not your true assessment. Real job will come where you will be happy. Hmm? The last one is what? Will be complete. Hallelujah. That, Sister Faith, is that your faith? Have you? Eh? Is that who? Eh? Victory. How many of you know her? Mm. Or oh, shall we? You are seeing BUK. What level? Eh? 200 level. All right. They used to call it 200 level. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to clap for Jesus. Yeah. Say, no, God helped her. And thank God for her commitment. Though her parents moved to the airport, but because of her love for church, anytime she's on break, she comes around. God will help her to finish well. Yeah. And because it's in church today, we're talking about a young girl getting married. She won't marry the wrong man. Yeah. And then may stand here. Every wrong marriage that will give you trouble, I cancel in Jesus' name. Yeah. Some of you who didn't say, you want to marry a witch? I say it again. Every marriage that will give you trouble, I cancel in Jesus' name. Even if you are in covenant with the person, I cancel the covenant. I break the covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. If you were in the first service last Sunday, let me see your hand. You were in the first service last Sunday. Thank you. You were in second service last Sunday. Let me see your hand. You were in second service. All right. Thank you. I preached one message last Sunday. And I was supposed to preach in the second service. But we had a guest. And I asked him to preach. And he talked about glory. And I promised that those of you who I didn't give the second message, that I will give you. But earlier this morning, I had preached one. And the one I preached is what? By this time, tomorrow. By this time, when? Tomorrow. In Second um, King chapter 6, from verse 24 down, we have a record of famine. Very terrible famine in the land of Israel. It became so bad that people were eating the sheet of birds. That's so bad. How many of you have eaten the, the, the sheet of bread before? You can't, it's not, it has not happened. And it will never happen. It was so terrible that this, how many of you have eaten donkey meat before? They didn't even have enough of it. Thank God. Only as I have eaten it. No, it's, some people eat it like meat. Eh? Only there is nowhere to be found. It's not too common here. But when you go to Abakali, go to some other place, they sell it. Even Kaduna, Kaduna Rujba, <laughs> it's not a too bad meat. But it's not common, but many of us would prefer to eat cow meat than eating that. This one was so bad that one head, head was sold for 80 pieces of silver. It was so expensive. So expensive that people were eating. And those who couldn't afford it, what were they eating? Some of the women had meat and said, we don't have meat to eat, we don't have food. Let us eat our children. So they slaughtered their children and they ate as food. And they, they, unfortunately, the first woman that brought forth her child had an encounter with another 419 woman. 419 is an old business that people have been into. She said, bring your child. We're going to eat. And after eating, I'm going to bring my own child. Why didn't you bring your own first? So the woman foolishly brought her own. They put knife on the neck of the child. Caught the child. The child died. That's so terrible. And they opened the stomach. Removed all the intestine. Cleaned everything. Removed the heart. They cleaned everything. And they boiled the children, dried some of them. And they ate. When they finished, the woman said, okay, it's your turn to keep. But before then, she had cooked part of the meat and gave the boy who was supposed to be killed. Say, after eating this one, run to my mother's place. Go and hide yourself there. And the boy ate and ran. The woman said, where is your child? He said, I can't find him. Emeka, where are you? Emeka, where are you? Emeka had gone to the grandmother's place by the instruction of the mother. And they were quarreling. And the king passed on the wall and said, what is happening? The woman said, help me. You need to help me. He said, what is the problem? He said, this woman. The woman did not even run. She was available. She said, she asked me to bring my child for her to eat. 
and we ate. And now it's her turn to bring to her own child. But the child had run away. Say, ah, this is happening in my kingdom. He said, yes. We don't have one, but do we know how many women have eaten their children? And the king said, I'm going to deal with Elisha. He don't want to make the kind of prophecy. Elisha already heard that the king was. He said, he said, when this man is coming, close the door against the messenger. But Elisha woke up and read a prophecy. It was an unbelievable prophecy. How is it going to happen? He said, by this time tomorrow, a measure of fine flour shall be sold for so-so amount. The vice president, chief of staff to the president, the PA, whichever one, but it's someone who's helped the king opened his mouth and said, even if the Lord will open the heaven, the Bible said that I do know their Lord shall be strong. I don't think that man knows the Lord. In short, he doesn't know the Lord. And that prophet said, who are you to doubt my prophecy? What God told me? In short, your punishment is that you're going to see it, but you will not eat of it. I want to pray for you. In the days of your blessing, you will not die. You know, there are people, I've been praying, there are people who start building houses. They don't pack into their house. But when they die, they just paint the house and they move in. That shall not be your portion. The Lord, the Bible in Isaiah 65, you shall build a house and you shall live in it. For everyone who is constructing a house, you shall finish it and you shall live in it. Every business you start, you shall eat of it. The Bible says you will plant a tree, you eat of it. That is Isaiah 65. In the book of Zechariah, it said, the hand of Zerubbabel and lay the foundation and the hand of Zerubbabel shall complete it. So everything you lay your hand upon, God shall prosper. And let me tell you, in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 36, the Bible says, and, Eli, and Hezekiah rejoiced, and all the people that God had prepared the people, that God had he rejoiced, and all the people, that God had prepared the people, for the thing was done how? Suddenly. A sudden blessing is coming over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. How it will happen, you will not be able to explain it. When it has to do with God, a thousand years with God in like one day. That is why all of you who are waiting to marry, the, ma the money they're going to use to pay your diary and your wedding, God is moving it into the bank account. And I hear you are amen. Anytime you hear prophecies, don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. I told those who were in the morning, Rasalas, please come again. God will keep you alive. Where is Rasalas? But you have to stop coming late to church. That's another one. Yes, so that God will complete his work. Listen to me. When we're talking about multiplication, come. What excites me is that the day he gave the testimony, the day he gave the testimony, I had talked with another family and we were praying for the, the son's admission into the university. He already had university admission to Federal University of Technology, Mena. He had done first semester, to waiting for second semester. Am I correct? 100 level. And as he went on strike, still waiting for them to resume. And suddenly, somebody said suddenly, he got another admission. When some other people were still looking for one admission, he got a second admission. And that second admission came with complete tuition for him. <laughs> At Nye University, where they pay 2.4 million. And the university said, we give you free. We're going to pay your school fees until you finish. There can't be anything more than new thing. There can't be anything more than multiplication. The God multiplied his admission. Somebody seated here. You're the next online for your testimony. He said, suddenly, anytime God says a thing, all you need is to ask God, grace to believe. Mary said, what prophecy the angel had given is too staggering. It's too big that I will become pregnant where I don't know a man. It did be called. He said, but may it happen to your servant as you have spoken. Everything spoken today, I see them coming to pass in your life. I said, I see them coming to pass in your life. And the man said, by this time tomorrow, I declare that you have a great future. By the power of God's word, I remove you from your lineage. And I plant you on the line of God. I plant you on the fertile land of God. On the altar of God, you shall run and excel. 
The Lord shall send you help in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that when God helped a man, that man is truly helped. And this morning, by the anointing power of the Holy Ghost, I release help for everyone I deserve. Receive help from the Lord. Receive help from the Lord. Uh, number 23, verse 19, the Bible says that what? Eh? God is not a man. Stand up. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Everything God says, he had the ability to bring to pass. There's a future for you. There's a tomorrow for you. And God will take you by the hand. You shall arrive. I say you shall arrive. Hear me, I say you shall arrive. Nothing will stop you. I say nothing will stop you. The hand of Jehovah is upon you and to help you. Somebody say, I receive the help of the Lord. Say it loud and clear. Say, I receive help from the Lord. I receive help from the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, go and sit down. Everything we have ever done in this church came by the help of the Lord. Came by what? Help of the Lord. And I see God. Stand up on your feet. Say, God, please, if you don't help me, nobody will help me. Please, Lord, I need your help. Don't pray. Be serious about it. Say, God, I need your help. God, I need your help. Oh, God, I need your help. What, what did I say? But I do hear what I'm saying every time. Oh, God, I need your help. Take the matter serious. Oh, God, I need your help. Please, Lord, I need your help. Help me, oh, God of heaven. Help me. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Receive that help in Jesus' name. Sit down. Do you know what? A woman in a church in Kabusa. You know, we just commenced the facing of the land. Before now, the church is here. The pastor's here. House. An Okada passed through. People walk here. People walk across zigzag inside the land. One woman was passing. And she said, Pastor, good afternoon. Please pray for me that I've married now for more than six years. No issue. And the pastor said, go to the altar. Cry and say, let the God of King Palace Church, the God of Reverend Samuel Buddha, help you. And the woman had a peculiar case. She was not seeing her menstruation. So she went to the altar and prayed. And like a joke, she went. After some months, this it behaved as if she had malaria. Because remember, she was not seeing her menstruation before. When the nun checked, the doctor told her, You are three months pregnant. <laughs> and the woman delivered, it after six months of that, she delivered a baby girl. And it came for dedication. That's how they became a member of the church. But you know, the devil that made her not to become pregnant also made her to be offended with the church. And they left the church. When they left the church, they didn't go to anywhere. They were just at home. May you not be offended with your help of destiny. Amen. Let me pray that prayer again. Put your hand on your head. Anyone that God has ordained to help you, may you not be offended with that person. Amen. May you not be offended with God himself. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now remove your hand on the head so that I can hear all that things. When the pastor told me, I said, ah, it's the devil that is behind this hole. And what happened? What is the offense? As he started coming to church, the man had no job. One of our sisters bought a bus. We said, okay, give the bus to the brother, since he can drive, so that he'll be getting money. The brother will drive every weekend, he will come. He will give the sister 15,000 naira. That is her own money. No, 18,000. Then he will now pay, give the sister, who is doing POS? 30,000. He said, this one is my own. Pay it into my account. The sister was getting how much? 18,000. The driver was getting how much? 30,000. So his own, bigger than the sister by how much? 12,000. The sister didn't complain. The brother, the brother came and said, he doesn't want to be going Saturday work again. He will still bring, he will now bring 15,000 and give to the sister. And give the sister 30,000 for himself. The sister said, no. This thing is not going to work like this now. If, when you reduce my own, you should have also done what? And it was not wise enough. If it's a wise man, he would have even divided the money to two and give to sister 15,000 year own and 15 my own and give another POS. But he was paying it through the same person. 
And the sister said, it's not going to work. So you have to give me a bus. Let me get another one. And the brother became angry and stopped coming to church. That church people are the ones who said they should stop. I told Pastor, the devil wants to kill this man. I said, you're going to do something for me. He said, what is that? I said, go. And, and the Pastor said, the people are ch changing color. Hunger has visited them. Though they have not eaten their children like that book. But they were close to eating children. <laughs> I said, go and buy one carton of Indomie and spaghetti and all that things. Go and visit them. And I'm coming. They visited them. And they were happy. He said, you mean the church love us like this? And I went for a program there. By the time I finished preaching, called a guy, told him some of the revelations I saw. I said, tell me some of the dreams you're having. He explained, I said, are you aware that it's the demon in your family that wants to destroy you? He knelt down and pleaded. As I'm talking to you, two Sundays ago, they dedicated another baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the devil came again. God, the devil always come. And the man said, in this show, they don't use to dash people money. They are not caring. They are not giving people food. They are not giving people money. He said, even if they don't have here, can't the headquarters be sending something for them? If go here, try thy believe. You will be speaking to what is not good. Headquarters will be sending. It's because human beings there are not human beings. I told them during the pastoral retreat, everybody you have head, go and quarter there. That's your headquarters. Is it not English? All of you pastors, you have head. Do what? Quarter in the place. And it becomes what? Headquarter. Raise your money and manage it. He told somebody that he's just waiting after his dedication. He will go to another church. So, I mean, why he had a dream? Now, he told the pastor, I had a dream that somebody covered his face. When they opened the face of the person, he now mentioned one, one person. And the pastor said, that dream you had that time, he said, say you are the one. <laughs> He said, yeah, who? He said, yeah, the he said, how? He said, this is what you said. He said, ah. He said, your problem, this is where your problem started. How much were you giving in God's? He said, 15,000. How much were you giving your own? He said, 30,000. He said, that's where your problem came. He said, ah, but nobody told him. I said, who will tell you that you will believe that? Time? He said, no, no, it's not going anywhere again. Everybody will say, oh, God of heaven. May he not go anywhere again. Keep him, oh God, and protect him in Jesus' name. You know, backsliding his heart is right in his own ways. No matter what you advise a man who is backsliding, a man who is on his slippery way, the man will be going until he's destroyed. But God will have mercy upon him. Because if the man is white, for six years you don't have a child. And God opened the womb of your child, your wife. Shouldn't you look for that God? And now God gave you a job. Meaning that in four weeks or five weeks, he was getting 150000 He didn't have wisdom. He went and reduced his sister's money without reducing his own. The Lord will show us mercy. Put your hand on your head. Don't discuss. Just put your hand. Say, God, I need wisdom. Take away every form of foolishness from me. Give me wisdom. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, when a man wants to fail, you see someone helping him. Just instead of him to say sorry, you look at it and say, Ibuchim. No, Abram Chim, I'm not here. He said, Ibuchim means, Are you my God? I am not. I am not your God. But he employed you. And when they sat you, it takes another prayer to another God for you to get another one. Why not be patient with the one you have? Somebody say, Wisdom. Say it again. Say it again. A man is feeding you. You say, uh-huh. What do you mean? Eh? There's one part in Igbo land. They know them to be very arrogant. I won't mention their town. I mean, that's why many of them have not gotten to a place they would have gotten to. They will tell you when they're angry with you. They're known for anger. He said, that place you use in feeding me, let it break. Meaning that that life you are giving me, take it, I won't do that. May you not be like that. I said, may you not be like that in the name of Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, I talked about multiplication. The place of the natural and the place of where? The supernatural. Prophecy had come. Let's take it from that Kabuza man. Supposing God had ordained that God 
was going to multiply his money. And he made that error. Will the multiplication continue? No. There's always the place of God and the place of man. So if you run one lane, you'll be missing it. You need to run through the, that dual carriageway in life for you to get it. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, the Bible says, May God sanctify you. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. Can you spread that in please quickly? Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. It shows clearly here that man is not just ordinary man, but man is a trap of that being. Man is a spirit. Everybody say it. Man has a soul. A man lives in the body. Sometimes back I try to tell people that if as a spirit you have a dream, your dream state, how many parts of your how many parts of you are involved in a dream state? How many parts? Because you don't know, you are unconscious. Your spirit is involved, and your soul is what? Involved. Is that your soul that will help you to remember the dream you have? If, for example, you had a dream. They have a cut in your body. How did they cut you? Did anybody come to cut you physically? Is it not spiritually? No, talk to me. Is it not spiritually? It's spiritually. How many of you have had such experience where you wake up? Where you wake up and you saw that somebody cut you? In short, somebody here, but the person had gone. Had a dream. In her dream, somebody was either fighting or doing something to her. And she... Try to catch the hand of the person. But she didn't know it was the husband's hand that she caught. She beat the man. Bite the man very well. The man woke up with wound on his hand. Physically, in the church. Not spiritual now. But it was happening when? In the spirit realm. So if you just think that it's only this body you have, without the spirit, you will be wasted up. I said, for example, if you have a, had a dream, and it, it's a nightmare, and you're troubled, now, when you wake up and the thing terrified you, the spiritual state of that dream is there. Then what will you be suffering now? Is it not at the soul level now and the physical body? If you are canceled, he said, I cancel that thing in Jesus' name. The dream is canceled. But the emotion of which is the soul is still there and the physical, what is triggered in your body. Until all of them, you are canceled to bring peace to your heart and you are treated physically. If not, the physical one will create another emotional trauma which was to launch you back to the spiritual problem. So you must understand the balance of the trap of that nature of man and follow it. That's why every day of your life, you need to take in the word of God like capsule, like multivitamin. Meditate on the word of God because it has the power to cleanse you, to purge you from every pollution that the enemy has put into your body. Are we together? Are we still together? Hallelujah. You are made in the image of God. There is need for you to live with the consciousness of our nature that you are made in the image of God. Ignoring that we are spirit or that we are spirit beings living in the body, we expose us to dangers and to spiritual attack and satanic harassment. In the same vein, ignoring our nature as human that has need of food, air, and other physiological needs like safety, need, personal security, employment, other resources, good health, property, and all of that, you will be missing it. You must know that this needs to be balanced. One of the days I went to Israel, and one of our tour guides told us that, said, do you see the flag of Israel? Now, what is in the flag of Israel? Um, the flag is blue and white. Am I correct? Yes. Now, what is the symbol? What do you see there? Eh? A star? Something like a star. Or two triangle. Two triangle. Yeah. And he said the two triangle, one point up to heaven and the other one point to the earth. To show you that even though you are going to heaven, but you are still living on the earth. Some of us forget that we are still living on the earth. And we are so concerned about heaven that we don't do anything. And now we begin to suffer it. And some also forget that we are going to heaven we are so occupied with material things on the earth that the devil begins to harass us. You must balance the two. You must do what? Balance the two. At all times of your life, don't ever forget God 
and don't forget yourself. That is why it is good that you go to school and the rest of them. If you are concerned only about the spiritual without being conscious of the physical, you may be missing out. Daniel chapter 5 verse 27. The Bible is talking about many, many take care over sin. That had weighed in the balances and had found one thing. If today you are carried and weighed in the balance of God, what will God find out? That you are concerned about the spiritual and you are not concerned about the spiritual? Maybe on one side, you are rich on one side. And on the other side, listen, when I was a national officer in food gospel, I would go for training. I will not forget one aspect on about, you know, the balances in life. They will ask people to write the percentages of their life. It, I, I, are you educated? What is the level of your education? 60 or 70 percent? What of your finances? Maybe 50 or 60 percent? What of your marriage? And all of that. After writing them, they will now ask you to cycle them. By the time you cycle, you discover that you will be having a bump ride that is not smooth because the things are not together. So there's need for balance in the life. You need to be married. That's why you need to maintain a good relationship. There are some girls, when you see them pray today, they're wonderful prayer warriors. But they don't have good character to relate with people that will make them marriageable. There are people today who have money, but nobody can relate with them. And we say, if you are put in a balance, how are you going, what are you going to wait? Are you going to weigh something reasonable? Or are you going to be like a feather on the other side? There's need for us as the people of God to be balanced in our activities with God. During our pastor training, I told them, as much as prayer is good, but knowledge is also what? Good. So that when you are praying, when the answer comes, knowledge will tell you that the answer has come. But without knowledge, you just be praying and praying and praying and praying. Praying and keep praying. And they were wonderful. You know, my pastor, one of our branches, well, every day they have night vision. Every day. This is very wonderful. You know, it's wonderful. But I called him, I said, are there married women coming for the my night visit? He said, yes. I said, stop. Reduce it. I said, how would they sleep with their husband and get children? He was looking at me. I said, reduce it to three times in a week. I must close early. No, prayer is good. But knowledge is important. And it didn't take long. What I told him, he said, one of the women was complaining. I said, I told you. Because knowledge is what? Important. People may follow you with zeal, but with time. Knowledge is very important. If you have money and knowledge, you may eat and kill yourself. Knowledge, very important. Some people have fasted and they have problem in breaking the fast. When the child was young, one man joined us with the wife. After three days fasting, you know what they used to break? Yam, boy, the yam, and the woman became sick. We have to go to pray for her. I ask God for mercy. That's why you see us when we have three days fasting here. What do we usually break? Eat the break? Eh? We get tea first, the hair boy movement. We we'll follow it with pap, with fruit, and all of that. Some people have done fasting three days. They went and ate fried meat. And that's death. The one I saw that it's not just happening with some members. But even some pastors, I bought a book written by General Overseer on Redeeming of Fasting. And I gave, I think I bought over four, gave to people free to read and understand what, how you can go about fasting and not have problem. Do you know somebody can stay one month without eating? I don't be taking water. But you must not take cold water. Just room temperature water. It will be cleansing your body. Your body will be refreshed. By the time you get to the 14th day, if you shake your mouth, you'll be smelling that of a baby. Because your body would have been detoxified from everyday things. And your cells are renewed every day. So you need to know them. And know the type of work you are doing. Not that you are molding block and you are doing 30 days fasting. Will it work? And you don't have a block making machine. It is when they do like this. Boom, boom, bam. You move again. You can't do that. You collapse. And when you collapse, you say it's the devil that attack you. One of our pastors said they're having many attacks. I said, which is, mention one of them. He said they were having night vigil. And the generator went off. I said, it's not attack. The generator is old. No devil came around you. So I said, keep quiet. No devil. I said, the generator have been using since you started. And the generator we even gave you, we have used it here and gave you. It's not a new one. I said, just like me now. I just woke up one day. I said, this is my white beard. The devil attacked my black beard and it turned to white. 
Am I speaking the truth? His age. Oh, Pastor John, now, do it like this. He says, they will attack him. It's not only really attack. His oh, age. They remind our guy, you are getting close to somewhere. Hallelujah. You must tell us every truth. I said, it's not attack. You are looking at me. Say, which one is attack? There are things you do out of carelessness. Say, it's attack. A man say, Kai, I'm feeling hot. And the weather is cold. You leave your chest open. And cold enter you. You catch pneumonia. Do you say, do you call it attack? No, no, it's not attack. It's attach. You attach yourself to cool and cool. Attach himself to you. And now he turns to pneumonia. He says, it's attack. Hope you know between attach and attack. What is different? Is it T or what? And the K. Is the K. So you K yourself. I become wise. And the K will remove. The attack will no longer come. You are being born again and being spiritual is good. But you still need wisdom and education. Having education and earthly wisdom, you still need salvation and God for preservation of life. If you go to the extreme right, without balancing on the left, you will have a problem. What we are trying to achieve is that there must be a balance. You are educated? Good. That will give you a job good. But know that there are people in the place of work after you have gotten a job there may be an attack in the place of work. There may be competition and confrontation. You need God to preserve you. You need God to defend you. You may need money to start business. But in that business environment there may be occultic people in that environment. Three of us. Three of us. Let me ask you how many of you know that I came and someone told me that there are some people who run big supermarket in this town that the occultic papa scattered them and all of that. They told me one along Fontage Road. They told me another. One woman came and knocked at my door. And I now began to watch. And Victoria's supermarket told me that in that their place, what they pour every morning, people pour. And then even the restaurant close to them, the woman, the mother comes out in the morning, naked, no cloth, with pouring water. If you see, go to that place, the building is not fine. No even seat to sit down. They are pounding here every day and people are rushing there because of the evil power they use in pulling them. That's why you need God. Even when you have money and you have wisdom and you have education, you still need who? God. And when you have God, you also need education. Because when they are employing, they are employing doctors, they won't employ people with the gift of healing. They will employ doctors. We only heal by laying of hand. We don't operate. When you see a pastor operating, something is wrong. He said, lie down. Uh, pastor God, give me a knife. We open. No, 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 no. There's a problem. And the person is struggling. They say, Pastor John, hold the leg. No, they used to hold the leg with anesthesia. And we don't have it here. Pastor John said, that they can't hold it. I say, call, call Bright. And Bright will come. Say, are you the only one shall I say no he says, he says, Say, call him man. All of you hold the leg of the bed. Is that how they do? We may have the gift of healing, but we still need the education. The Bible says, settle with one another, but there are people that can't settle with them. We still need lawyers to go to the court and settle them. We know very well that when Moses was leading the people of Israel from the Egypt to the promised land. His stick parted the water. But now that it's not there, we need engineers to cross the second Niger Bridge for us. <laughs> Are you following? Because you can't go and stand by the river bank of Onisha and say, bam, all of you pass. Unless your wife will take the lead. But even though your wife will not agree to take the lead. So we need them. Science came by God. And you want to see in the Bible. We need to balance it. We need bankers to tell us what to do with money. Having education and earthly wisdom, you still need salvation and God for preservation. For Samuel 2 9, the Bible says, By strength shall no man prevail. Don't ever depend on your physical resources. You need God. Don't ever depend on your beauty. Say, I'm a girl. You are walking. You are walking. You walk. You do like this. I say, No wonder. Uh, peacock, they call it Toledo to Meki Yanga. How many of you have seen Peacock before? What many you have in the house? When you spread that thing, when you are watching it, the scene is so beautiful. And you make guy go like this. You just do like this. I 
and it'll be working. And once you're watching and admiring it, the bird knows that you're admiring it. Please, you are a human being. Don't be a peacock. Every person with a peacock spirit, I arrest that spirit and I release you. You understand what I mean? You know the small money you have has entered your head. The small degree you have. Your small beauty. Not even complete. The other one's foundation and makeup. The American guy, be careful. Tell your neighbor, be careful. You need to come down from your, your camera. You need God. What are you saying? You need God. You are doing like this. To lot to the make younger. But the peacock is the one that make younger. With men are even supposed to be making younger. Peahen. Does peahen make younger? Eh? It doesn't. Peahen is the female one, but the other one. The other one, peacock. The cock is man. But you now a woman. You carry the guy. Hmm? Go and check it now. Mom, is it not male? That one that make guy. Is it not male? The female doesn't make guy. Peahen doesn't make guy. But women now went and carry what men should be doing. And become peacock. Why? That's what the Bible said. That's what we have. Peacock is the male. Peahen is the woman. But instead of the male making guy, women are now making a borrowed animal to be making guy like animal. May God have mercy on us. I say, may God have mercy on us. Hope you know there are some hair tie that is like peacock. Yes. By strength shall no man prevail. It's not your beauty that will give you the best of husband. The place of wisdom and training, very important. Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Daniel chapter 1, 3 to 5. And the, Lord, and the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuch, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed, and of the princess, children in whom was no blemish, but were favored and skillful in how many wisdom and cunning what in knowledge and understanding what? Eh? Is this science different from the science we studied today? No. So you can see science is part of the Bible. And so it has had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the chariots. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Now go to verse 15. No, 17, sorry. 17 to 21. 17. As for these four children, what did God give them? How did they arrive at God giving them? They were, first of all, admitted into a college to be trained for three years. In those days, to, I think even in up to now in America, to get a degree, how many years does it require? Eh? How many years will be in America to get a degree? Two years? Three. Depends. Yeah, but no. Remove medicine and all that. Before, three years. Uh, who is saying two? Eh? How many? Two years. Three. Up to that. Good. So that's where they landed. Three years. God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. 18. Now at the end of the days, that is the time of graduation, the king has said he sh should bring them in. Then the prince of the eunuch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. That was interview. And among them all was found none. Like Daniel, and Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood there before the king. 20. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king required of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even until the fourth year of King Cyrus. So meaning another king tenor ended, another king took over. But because of the wisdom, the man continued. What gave him that? His training. His what? His what? There's need for training. Don't ever despise training. Don't ever despise what? See, opportunity can come, but a prepared man is likely going to meet the opportunity when you're prepared. So don't ever despise the people of the past. Say, no, what am I looking for degree for? 
Uh, well, I'm just born again. No, no, no. My BA is enough. Born again. No, they still need for Bachelor of Arts because they don't employ with certificate of discipleship class. But it's only to show that you're a child of God and you have gone through some things. But even say so you have all the degree, including PhD. Have you not seen people with PhD that the devil killed? With their PhD, the devil killed them. That's why you need God at all times. This needs to be balanced. Praise the name of the Lord. This needs to be what? Balance needs to be balanced. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. Wisdom is profitable to direct. If the iron be blunt, and he does not wear the edge, then must he put into more strength. But wisdom is profitable to do what? To direct. Wisdom is important. When you have it, you are given direction. Prayer is important, but that is not all that is required. Hard work is good, but that is not all that is expected. We need to balance the natural and the supernatural. For all to have a proper and lasting multiplication. First Kings chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible talks about you. And keep the child of the Lord, your God, to walk in harmony of his ways. In all his ways, keep his statutes and his commandment and his judgment and his testimony, as is written in the Lord of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whatsoever. So there's a place of doing and there's a place of keeping the commandment of the Lord. So you need God, even as much as you do other things. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 8 to 10. Deuteronomy 30. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Lord our God will make thee plenteous in every work of their hand. So God still recognizes the place of walking with your hand. The place of what? Not just the place of prayer. The place of walking with your hand. In the fruit of their body and in the fruit of their cattle and in the fruit of their land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice. Verse 10. Over thee for good as he rejoiced over their fathers. If thou shalt do what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. He see the place of spiritual obeying God and the place of doing with your hand that God will bless you. Don't despise them. Walk with your hand, obey God with your heart, and God will put his blessing upon you as his child. Well, God knows those who are his own. I will see together. There is always the place of faith and prayer. That is spiritual through supernatural. And the place of doing physical activity and natural activity. The another one where we round up, where we took a Bible reading. What do you have? That you want God to multiply. What do you have? First King chapter 4 from verse, from verse 1. What do you have? First King 4. The Bible said, okay, second King, thank you. Now there cried a certain woman, or the wives of the sons of the prophets, unto Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know very well that my servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. If I turn this to a Bible class, what do you think that prophet lacked before he died? Eh? Eh? The physical. Yes? What do you think he lacked? Are we together? From the media. From number one, two, three, four. What do you think that prophet lacked? Eh? Money, Abby. Apart from money, what do you think from what I'm teaching? I'm talking about multiplication the place of natural and supernatural. Of course, you know, the wife said that the man feared the Lord. So, he was good in the spiritual area. But in the physical, was he good? Because the person that the wife went to is also a prophet. So, if you can go to the prophet to ask help, what is it that your husband didn't learn from that prophet? He should have learned that why he's alive. The man was just living his life, praying, but the place of investment, anytime they dash him money, he walked off. To the point that he went into debt. Every person that is in debt today, I cancel that debt for you. Amen. But when God give you wisdom not to go into it again, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said that the woman continued. Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? He said, this, this, this. Your handman had not anything. And that is the claim of everybody most time. 
we don't have anything. We don't have. There's something that you have. There's the gift of God in you. There's one small thing. That's saving. You can invest it. And God will breathe upon it. You have a skill. You have a talent. You have something. You have something. And God can breathe upon it. Say, so your hand may have not anything. And the poor. Save a pot of oil. Remember the widow of Zarephath. She doesn't have anything. Only two sticks. One small flour and one oil. But the oil of Elijah came upon her and the thing multiplied. The oil of multiplication is coming upon you today. And that thing that you have as a business, as an idea, as a vocation, I see God prospering it. They said, go borrow the vessels abroad. Of who? Of who? All your neighbors. As I was reading this thing and meditating, I said, supposing the woman did not have good relationship with her neighbors, will the multiplication work? You know there are people who quarry because they are born again. They don't greet anybody in their neighborhood. They don't take and they don't call anybody's phone. So he said, borrow. So it means Elisha still involved the physical for the spiritual to happen. Do you know, some of us here, your destiny is in the hand of somebody. All you need to do is to locate the person. Because God will not come down to do it. You need to cooperate with God. God said, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. And somebody's destiny is in your hand. And you need to realize it. He said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all their neighbors. Even empty vessels. Don't tell them to give you the one that have oil. Go and ask them what they can easily give. Some people go to ask people what they can give. He said, give me one million naira. Somebody said, please give me money. I'm going to pay you in June. I said, this match is already ending. Where are you going to get the money? I said, if you can raise such money, you would have been able to raise it yourself. It's easier to know who will not pay debt on time. He said, please, can you give me 300,000? I'll give you at the end of April. All right, sit down. How do we get the money? He said, when they pay me salary. How much is salary? He said, 80,000. Can somebody salary 80,000? Even if you give you six months, are you going to get the money? And I advise you, if you have such money, remove 80 and dash the person. Don't borrow them. Or give the person the whole money free. If it's debt, I'm not coming to settle case because no, no, you will not be able to pay the money. I, I will sit together. I will sit together. This is what is happening. I've not replied to the person in the text because I know it's not a possibility. But if I have the money, I'll give you the money. So there are things you shouldn't borrow. Say, give me one million naira. You know there are some foolish people who borrow money to invest online. Who is online? Eh? What is the name of the online? What is the address? As before you know, two weeks, the thing has closed. Site has closed. Where is site? You go and borrow money from bank to do online. You're already online to go and fill. You know, online and online. Hmm? Yes. You have already entered queue to fill. Say you invested online. I'm not saying you don't invest online. All manner of coins are, are, are in the market. You are buying. There are Zuga coins. It's only my coin that has not entered the market. Some coins. There are people who almost run crazy. They bought billion coins. They told them the thing had matured and become one billion. Somebody came and told me, I said, let the man give me even if it's two million and keep the remaining 980 million. Becoming one billion. And people gathered in joy. They, do people. they said they are buying Indomie and other things with a billion coins. I said, why are they not buying cars? People are buying Indomie. It's just the owners who organize it. They just read something. They say, come and buy. He did some transfer. One man is in uh, Dogon Karifel. Another person is another one. They say they talk to one administrator. And they're all in Nigeria. And people are investing online. Verify every investment. And don't take loan to do online investment. Somebody say, I hear. Let it be that you hear very well. Ask your neighbor, did you really hear? Or they said, better hear. Better hear. 
Every wife, tell your husband, don't borrow money. Don't use your capital to do online. The Lord will help us. And don't sell land to do online. Rather, in Nigeria, we used to get money from online and buy land. Buy land. We don't sell land. Land is an asset in Africa. Don't sell land to do online. Help me tell your neighbor. All right. Anyway, don't say I didn't tell you. I finished preaching that one. Verse 4. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon their sons. That is obedience. That is what? Obedience. And shall pour into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Obedience. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought these verses to her and she poured out. I want to ask you, supposing the husband was humble enough to go to the senior prophet and say, this is what I'm passing through. And this instruction was given. Do you know they would have doubled the number of verses they are borrowing? But the man didn't. Possibly pride. We're all prophets. And when kids call him, we're all prophets now. It is the same God that called in Miles' way, well, that called Bright. It is the same God now. That is it not? It is the same God that called. The people will all receive telephone call. But our phone maker, they the same. So she went from him and shut the door. Verse 6. She still got connected to the man of God. Someone would have filled all the verses and start eating or start selling. But she waited for the next instruction. So for every step you need to take, God needs to be involved. God, God is the one that knows tomorrow. Many of us have taken steps or decision without God. Let every of your decision, let God be involved. Whether you're married or business, let God be involved. Don't do because others are doing. And it came to pass when the verses were full, that she said unto her son, bring me the vessel. And he said unto her, there's not a vessel more. And the oil is dead. Verse 7. Now before that verse 7, who was responsible for the flow of the oil? Eh? That's what they call multiplication. But who was responsible for bringing the vessel? Eh? So can you see? Now, what made the oil to cease? Because the vessel finished. Say, bring me yet another one. The work of man stopped. So the work of God did what? Stopped. But if there were vessels, where did all you continue? Yes. So if you continue doing your work, God will continue doing his own. The day you stop doing your own, God will stop doing his own. The heaven of heaven belongs to God. But the earth had he given to who? To the sons of men. She came and told the man of God and said, and the man of God said to her, go and do what? Sell the oil. Where the instruction coming from? From God. Who had the power to provide the buyers? God. She said, go and sell the oil. And do what? Pay your debt. Physical responsibility. And the remaining one, live by them, you and your children. The rest of them. And the woman obeyed. That was how she began an oil business. I pray for somebody today. Your debt are canceled. You are moving into a new lease of life. All the bodies, I see somebody, you carry bodies here. The bodies you are carrying are too much. But I see God removing them. Every person that's here, bother your head. You are here, the load you are carrying is more than you. When you calculate your salary, you know it's not just, you're just surviving by his grace. It's not, it's not by grace, by sheer grace. Tell God, please, take this load off my shoulder. Come to the altar. Offload the bodies on the altar. I'm not just talking about salary alone. There are bodies you are carrying. They got to offload it. The burden bearer is here. Quiet, give me that song before you come. The burden bearer. Oh, well, God will remove your burden, but that's on you. Bones are lifted that Calvary. 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 Born is a lead at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Born is a lead. 
and give us wisdom from today. That your business that God will breathe upon it. I've got breathe upon my business. Breathe upon my handwork. Let God pay your bills. Let God meet your needs. Needs are met. Bills are paid. Debts are cancelled. Needs are met. Bills are paid. Debts are cancelled. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Lord, your people are at the altar. And you're here with them. As they are rising up, remove the load from their shoulders. Lord, remove the load from their shoulders. Bear their bodies with them. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Jesus knows all about us. He will guide to the day No, there's not a prayer like a lowly Jesus Can we stretch our hand and begin to ask God to bless his servant? God has used him so mightly this morning to bless us. <laughs> 